All right, boys, let's go through the patch notes together, shall we? Here are all the new skins coming out in season nine on the release of the patch. Pretty cool skins, honestly. I, I like the, uh, the, like the demon skins. They're all kind of put together. Um, Apollo is getting a rework. Not a rework, sorry, but a reskin to look even more like Rexy. It actually is almost identical. You, you wouldn't see any difference if you looked at Rexy or Apollo. Now, they look that they, I mean, they look like brothers. Even like down to the abs. I see Rexy shirtless every other day and down to the abs. Like he, it's just, it looks exactly like him. So, you know, good on them. Good on them. I got the season pass, uh, updated release schedule, the, the Dharmic era event. It's all, it's all stuff that you've all seen before. We don't care about that stuff. Bugs, you know, whatever. What we care about is game modes, all right? Slash and Siege got mushed into Cleage, aka Slash, which is, I mean, honestly, I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of the same thing, to be honest with you. I'll have, to, I'll have to see about it when, you know, the actual map itself is out and I can play on it. But you can read about it here. Obviously, the, the link to the patch notes I'll, I'll put wherever um conquest got changed the new obelisk sounds sick it sounds sick so basically there's an obelisk in the map that well i think there's two of them right on each side of the jungle yeah um and now they bank power whenever you pick it up whenever you're going towards uh <laughs> thank you for linking that in the chat but there's little orbs that you can pick up uh, off killing the uh, the side camps now. It will spawn orbs in your jungle, and you have to go and pick up the orbs. And after you pick up the orb, you get uh, Indra's Scepter, a new powerful type of jungle buff. Basically, um, does damage to anyone around you if they're an enemy, or heals your whole team if, it, if they're around you. And it's right here. Here's the new buff. I cannot be picked up by the enemy team, so you can't invade and steal it once the, the obelisk is med capped out. A lifetime of four minutes, which begins ticking down as soon as it spawns. When you pick it up, um, it has its two modes. It's picked up by the first friendly god that touches it. So just like every other buff in the game, pretty much. Um, It has the two modes. One mode is uh, if there's no enemies around within 35 units, it will start giving HP 5 and healing um, allies as well as structures. 75 HP 5 for structures. Meaning, you pick this up and your phoenix is 1 HP, just stand by that bitch for 30 seconds, it'll be full HP and then you can run off and do whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, if you're near an enemy, it will instead shoot lightning at them. Well, a fireball lightning. Fireball lightning. <laughs> every, uh, every second, up to five enemies target simultaneously, so it will hit the entire enemy team. Dealing 3.5% of the enemy's max health and prioritizing gods over minions, obviously. Um, so basically, every second you're next to an enemy, it will do 3.5% of their HP. It's absolutely fucking dumb. It's OP. A team fight normally lasts 15 seconds, and I'm bad at math, but that's somewhere around 50% of their health just by this own this uh just this on um, this buff. Like get just give this buff to your guardian and have them stand in the middle of a team fight and shit on everyone. Just just shit on everyone. Uh so I think the number needs to be adjusted. This probably should be like one percent of the their health, two percent at most, but three point five is ridiculous. Um, these are the NPCs. They're called Nagas that spawn in the lane. Obviously, two in duo, one in solo. They drop um, the offerings that you pick up to power the, the obelisk. Everything else is pretty much the same, I'm pretty sure. Uh, nothing changed about that. The arena. Yeah, it's just arena. One second. Okay. Um, now we get into the actual changes. Relics now have... 
um, you know, upgrades to them. Uh, the tier two of the upgrade is 300 gold. Used to be 500 gold. Now it's 300 gold. And you can upgrade to tier three. Upgrading it to tier three actually has a, a normal path where it follows, you know, the general normal path. You get ages for longer or whatever. Um, or it completely switches it up. They showed this in the form of, um, was it called? Cursed Onk, where if you, the enemy heals while they have the Cursed Onk on them, it drops a puddle of poison under them that will tick for damage and, um, basically just got to avoid that during team fights now. So there's two different types of things, uh, for tier three relics. I'm, mean, you're going to have to see more about them. Oh, actually, they have them here. I lied to you. Cool. So they have the normal upgraded relic, which just lowers the cooldown, and then they have the tier 3 of it, which is either Aegis of Acceleration or Aegis of Judgment. Acceleration makes you invulnerable to damage and healing for 1.5 seconds. Prevents you from taking any uh, actions. Each instance of damage prevented in this time, give, in this time gives you a 7% movement speed buff up to stacking 3 times. So 21% movement speed buff for 4 seconds. If you age, just like, let's say you age just a good alt, you got 21% movement speed for four seconds to get the fuck out of dodge. <laughs> and then they have this one, which is, um, it prevents you from taking any damage. Obviously the normal ages move, but then now you can move again. There was an ages before that let you move during it, but now you can actually move during your ages still. Uh, I guess you can move during this one too, but at the end of the duration, you explode. You're you're boomed, dude. 50% of the prevented damage as magical damage in a 30 unit radius. The damage dealt by this effect is capped at 50% of your maximum health. So let's say, just for fun, let's just say, oh, you're fighting a Poseidon. You grab Aegis of Judgment and they crack in your ass. Kraken does, you know, fucking 1,000 damage at level 20, right? Um... You block a thousand damage, and now uh fifty percent of that a thousand, so five hundred damage plus the one hundred by default. You're doing a six hundred damage nuke to that Poseidon who just cracking your dumb ass, and uh, there you go, easy. <coughs> Good luck, Poseidon mains. They got Belt of Frenzy. Um, they gave it actually a damage increase. Which is really nice. A 5% damage increase, 1 second duration. Increase the cooldown a little bit, but is what it is. Penetration is no longer on this thing. It just gives you a straight up 15% damage buff, which is really nice, actually. And then the upgrade of it uh, gives you a 30% increased damage to all targets, including objectives, and a 50%... What the fuck? Excuse me? 30% increased damage and 50% increased attack speed. It decreases every 0.5 seconds for 6 seconds. But holy shit, dude. You just pop... And it works on objectives, too. You just pop this motherfucker and your whole team shreds Bull Demon or, or like in Joust or like shreds Fire Giant in Conquest. What does this one do? This item grants all 50% damage increase... 25% attack speed for 10 seconds. If you earn a killer assist while this buff is active, the duration refreshes. 15% damage and 25% attack speed for 20 seconds because it can be, it can get refreshed. Whoa, dude. Frenzy got nuts. Frenzy got fucking cracked. I don't know if I like the, the, the 20 second, 25% attack speed or the like, three second 50 percent attack speed i don't know which one i like more i feel like for for duel i'm gonna like this one more because fights you know you're fighting to the death most of the time so i don't know that's fucking wild this is wild i love this shit relics are pog okay so blink on blink no changes to normal blink. Dam damage mitigation removed from the upgraded blink. So there's literally no reason to upgrade blink. But the tier 3. Using this item allows you to teleport 45 units away instantly. Item can't, cannot be used if you have taken any damage. Um, 
in the last three seconds. On blinking, you slow all enemies' movement speed and attack speed by 15% within, a, within the radius that you land. So you blink offensively. If you blink next to somebody, it slows their movement speed and attack speed by 15% for 2.5 seconds. That's really good, actually. Because, like, let's say you're Kali, right? Your main issue with Kali is people running away from you, bitch ass, when you blink on them. <laughs> and now you're slowing them down when you blink on them. That's actually really nice. I like that a lot. And then the other version of blink is scorching blink. This item will allow you to leave behind a trail of wildfire that deals 20 true damage plus 4 true damage per level to enemies that pass through it. And it does, it does 8 ticks of damage. This item cannot be used if you have taken... Okay, so basically, at level 20, it does 100 damage per tick, and it ticks 8 times. Okay. Did I do that math wrong? 4 true damage per level. 20 levels, that's 80, plus 20 here, which is... Okay, so yeah, it's 100 true... It's 100 true damage per level, and it ticks 8 times. It does 800 true damage. What the fuck? Are you kidding me? That... I'm wrong, right? That's Sir Cat Alt. That's, that's literally Sir Cat Alt. They'd have to get stuck in it? Well, uh, yeah, but, like, imagine, like, as Kali, you blink past someone and stun them. I thought, is, is it not, like, a tick? Maybe it's not, like, um... Maybe it's not, like, a buff that... I was thinking, like, Agni Dash, right? I was thinking Agni Dash, if they walked through it, it would apply to them. But maybe it only does damage if they're actually in the line. And if that's the case, then it more than likely will only do two or three hundred damage. Which is still good. It's two or three hundred true damage, you know? I don't know. I'm going to have to see how this plays out in game. Because if this is like Agni Dash, which I assume it is, where the effect just gets applied to you if you walk through it, then you're dead. I mean, you're dead as fuck. It's just how it works. Um, all right. Tracer. No longer Sentry Ward when it's upgraded. Power buff increase. Um, place a Radiant Glow at a target for 90 seconds. Allies move through it. Gain 20% power, 20% movement speed for 8 seconds. Does act as a sentry. Okay. 20% power, 20% move speed. That's basically just a better version of the tier 2. And this one. 10% power if above half. 15% move speed if below half. On use, a light sprite appears, patrolling back and forth, revealing enemies along the way. Ah. That's... That's cool, but you would never use it, I don't think. You would always go for this. 20% increased power, 20% movement speed. You would always go for this, 100%. Like, 20% <clears throat> increased power is not a small amount, right? Like, uh, especially if I could just reference one of my own videos for a second. The, the 2000 power Kronos video, I actually used Bracer in order to do that. If I got an extra 10% power, oh my... You use this, you use Bracer, plus this, 30% increased damage, 50% attack speed. You're doing 50% more damage with and attacking 50% faster. While also moving 20% faster. You are absolutely shitting on objectives at this point. Oh my god. That's wild. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> New change to meditation, apparently. Base health restoration from 8 to 12. It got a buff. It got another buff. So meditation's OP. Okay. So no, don't go shell anymore. Just go meditation. Even if you're a healer, just go meditation. It's OP. Um, anyways. Using this item calls you to enter a meditative state. Uh, where nearby allied gods within 35 units restore... They're missing health and mana each tick. Um, uh, upgrades to 7% actually, which is pretty crazy. Heals occur once every second for 4 seconds. Each pulse reduces. So this is just a 
I mean, this is just a better, a better tier two, right? Like this is just exactly what tier two was, but better. Each pulse for, okay. So if you leave, if you, if you hit all four of these, you get six seconds off your cooldowns. Right? Because it pulses four times. Each pulse reduces cooldowns by 1.5 seconds. That's pretty good. And it's 7% of your health, too, for each pulse. So you're healing 30% of your health and getting 6% or er, and 6 seconds off your cooldowns. All right. That's a good ass item. That's a good ass item. Does Med Cloak reduce cooldowns on alts? Yeah, it says all abilities. So it includes alts. Use this item causes you to enter a meditative state where units restore less of their health and mana per tick. Only 6% instead of 7 or 7. Um, heals occur. You gain a protective barrier that explodes if an enemy comes within 15 units, knocking them back. So basically, it's like a fuck you. It's like this one heals you more, but this one's like get oh, get away from me. I'm locking the door. Stay away from my children. You know, like that's what this is. I don't. I don't mind. I I think both of these actually have their place. I like them. Like if I was fighting a Kali or someone, I would. I think I'd rather buy this. But if I was like, if I was fighting like, I don't know, if I was a Hades or I was a Poseidon or something that could use six per or six seconds off cooldowns, I would rather go this. I think both of these are nice, actually. First Ankh, let's see. Um, shield the damage increased to 75%. Added 10% damage taken debuff when healed. Okay. Here two. That's the same shield damage. Um, decrease the damage taken from 20% to 10%. Okay. And then, uh, this is the blighted onk that, that I think this is what I showed you. Enemies that are healed by, oh my God, are affected by this curse. Take 20% more damage. All healing reduced by this is instead distributed to your allies. So this is not the one I showed you actually, or I, I was telling you about this one is basically like a team wide tainted amulet. That's pretty cool. I actually, I think a team wide tainted amulet is kind of sick, especially if you're using it to counter a hell, hell heals our whole team. You put this on the hell, all of a sudden the hell's healing your whole team. That's, that's nice. And this, this is the one that just leaves, um, yeah, the, the pool of miasma to form beneath for six seconds. It does 2% of their current health every 0.5 seconds. So if you, Pop this and then lock somebody down. You're dealing, what is that? 24% of their current health. Not bad. Not bad. Not great. I think, I think you would much rather go blighted on here. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, all right. Brint. Remove the haste effect on upgraded tier two. Probably gives it back on this one. Um... Tangled Wings. Using this item, increase the movement speed of all your ally gods within 55 units by 20% for 5 seconds and making you immune to slows. On use, this relic also roots enemies around you for 1 second. Alright, so another one of those, like, I'm gonna use this to get, get the hell away. Alright. Nice, nice. I respect. Or, or it's good for chasing, even. Of your Mercury and they're running away, you just pop this and root them down for a second, get a couple punches off. Using this item, uh, increase the movement speed of ally gods by 20% for four seconds. So a second, a second less makes them mute to slows grants haste. So there's the haste back causing basic uh, attack penalty or removing basic attack penalty for the duration su successful basic attacks, increase duration up to four seconds. So this could be an eight second long sprint. Could be an eight second long sprint. I don't know how long sprint normally lasted. But this is basically an eight second long sprint for any kind of melee that picks it up. That's, that's real good. You're not getting away. You are not getting away from that. Gotta be scared. Gotta be scared of that now. Um, all right. Perfect emblem. 
Attack speed debuff increased to 25%. 15% decreased damage dealt debuff. This is just on the basic... Basic horrific emblem fucking slaps. Are you kidding me? Just normal, normal horrific emblem now does 25% attack speed debuff and 15% damage dealt debuff. Just shit on all hunters. Honestly, just shit on them. But let's see what the upgrades are. Using this item slows the movement speed of all enemy gods within 35 units by 30% for 5 seconds. Their attack speed is also reduced by 25% for the duration. Additionally, their damage dealt is reduced by 50%. Pretty pretty normal stuff so far. If an enemy deals 10% of an allied god's maximum health in this amount of time, the debuff effects are increased by 10% each, stacking up to 30%. What the fuck? So if any if someone is trying to fight you through horrific, you will slow their, their attack speed by 55% and their damage by 45%. Basically making them nothing. They are irrelevant to you at this point. If they're beating the shit out of you that bad, you can make them irrelevant. That's insane. That's wild. What does this one do? Their damage dealt is reduced by 15%. If an enemy is dealt 30% of their maximum health, they are trembled for 1.5 seconds. Okay, so you can either... Is it additional or multiplicative? I, I'm pretty sure it's additional. The debuff effects are increased by 10% each. So the debuff already applied is then increased by 10% every time and it stacks up to three times for a total of 30% increase. Yeah. So I think it's additional, not multiplicative. Crazy. This one kind of blows. I mean... If they're dealt 30% of their of their health during this time, their camera shakes. Oh no. <laughs> what the fuck? Like nobody cares about this, I think. It's like standing in a cabra all, or a cabra three for 1.5 seconds. Sure, maybe your movement is slightly skewed, but it's only for one second. It's not that big of a deal. This is fucking crazy. Uh magic shell, okay. Increases damage reduction from basic attacks by 20% to 25%. Nice. Upgrades are... The shield, obviously. Additionally, all allies take 50% reduced basic damage for the duration. That was already on tier 2. Which is now on the tier 3, obviously. When the shield is broken... Thank you for the sub, Rival. Appreciate it. When the shield is broken or expires, allies gain a new buff, providing 20% damage mitigation and 20% movement speed for 3 seconds. Okay, so and it's just another, I feel like the theme is basically Solasama, thank you for the sub. I feel like the theme is basically get the fuck out of Dodge or murder the shit out of them. Those are, those are the only two, like those are the things, right? <clears throat> and this is Phantom Shell. Phantom, obviously, oh, I don't know if you guys knew this, but Phantom is actually getting um, removed out of the game, so unlucky but uh it now is basically just an upgraded shell you just get tier three shell in order to get phantom but i i, I actually like the shell upgrades this is really nice 20 percent damage mitigation 20 percent move speed to get out of dodge that's good uh beads same thing same thing using this item removes crowd control effects yeah 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 where's the cool stuff including on activation, sends out a homing projectile to the enemy who applied it. Any CC effect that is cleansed during this time, including on activation, sends out a homing projectile to the enemy who applied it, dealing 7% of their maximum health. What if they CC you multiple times? Do multiple homing projectiles go out? Let's say like a Scotty, right? They do their three and they do their one. Are you getting, are you doing 14% of their health or is it only one? I don't know. If it's, if it, if it has no internal cooldown, this is super good, especially in conquest. This is super good in conquest. <laughs> um, and temporal beads. It's basically normal beads, but you're, 
uh, relics, or not your relics, I'm sorry, your abilities are reduced by three seconds. <clears throat> Any kind of cooldown you have is reduced by three seconds. So like this, temporal beads plus, um, where is it? Plus this meditation, you can take nine seconds off of your cooldowns in the middle of a fight. Just boom, pop nine seconds off your cooldowns and including your alt, by the way. Like, let's say you're raw. Raw's alt at max cooldown is only like 30 seconds as is. If you use both of these things, it's like you get 10 seconds. You get like a 30 year alt back immediately right after you use it. That's crazy. <clears throat> All right, thorns. Let's see. Uh, what the fuck is this? Damage reflect from 30% of all damage to 25, 25%. Okay, so it got a little bit of a nerf. Added negative 25% lifesteal debuff. Oh, yeah, okay. So, for those who don't know, when you upgraded Thorns before, it was a 50% debuff lifesteal on you. Like, if they hit you, they would only get 50% of the lifesteal. 25% now. Okay, got it. Got it. <clears throat> what is this? Thorns of Overgrowth. Uh, twenty-five percent of the damage you take before mitigations for the next five seconds back to its owner. Magic damage if you are dealt one hundred and twenty times your level damage while this is active, it will end early. So I guess if you get clapped up, it you know, R.I.P. Um, while this is active, enemies can only life steal from you for fifty percent of their total life steal. Additionally, you gain five percent movement speed and attack speed for each enemy god. In this is garbage. Don't buy it. Okay. Easy. And what is this one? Uh, it's garbage in duel. It's actually pretty good in conquest. Don't ever buy it in, in duel, but it's good in conquest. Um, and what does this one do? The next two seconds, this only reflects damage for the next two seconds, but it's 35% of the damage you take, which is pretty good. While this is active, you can only life steal. They can life steal 75% of their total life steal. Each basic attack from the enemy god reduces the cooldown of this item by 0.5 seconds. Huh. I don't know. I mean, obviously, Thorns of Sapping Strength is what you're going to buy in Duel. But that's a hard one to judge because the cooldown's only 80 seconds on this too. It's got a high reflection rate for a very short amount of time and a very short cooldown. That's actually lowered by, you know, her auto. So, I don't know. We'll have to see about this one. This one's weird. This one's weird. Um, Thundering Spear. Same shit. Same shit. Pretty, like, you know, is what it is. Always has two charges. <laughs> um, yeah, with Ritual Dagger, this is a 40 second cooldown relic. You're going to be popping thorns more than you're going to be alting. Um, let's see what the Sunder upgrades are. Uh, dealing 15% of their current health as true damage and reducing any active shield by 70%. It take 5% increased damage, 5 seconds stack. So this is 30% of their current health as true damage. If you hit, Assuming you hit it twice, right? Because it has two charges. 30% of their current health is true damage. And 10% increase take uh increase damage taken debuff on them for five seconds. That's a lot of damage dealt. And this one. Um reducing any active shields by seven percent, linking them to you. For the next four seconds, they are dealt five percent of their current health as true damage. Every second you receive half of that amount as healing. It's tw so it's 20% of their current health is true damage because it's 5% every second for 4 seconds. Okay. So it's 20% of their current health is true damage and you receive 10% basically. Um, enemies can break the link if they move past 60 units from you as 2 charges. A second hit on the same target will refresh the duration. Ah. Okay. This is really cool. Let's say if you do the, if you use both sunder, if you use both charges perfectly, you're dealing 40% of them, their health and healing 20% of their health to you, which a lot of times is more than 20% of your own health. So this is cool. I, li I like sundering siphon more than I like sundering blast. 
But they both have their own their own things, right? Like this one's just boom, chunked out, dumbass bitch. And this one's like boom, slowly tick down, and also heal me a little bit. Believe it or not, this one actually does more damage overall than Sundering Blast. But you don't get a damage increase on them. You don't get this, this extra damage increase that Sunder is so known for. You got to keep that in mind. Uh, teleport Glyph is now Teleport Fragment. That, but what? Um, can no longer teleport to wards with Greater Teleport Fragment. Alright. Using this item allows you to teleport to any allied structure or ward while rooted in place. Effect is not interrupted by damage, but it is interrupted by hard crowd control. After teleporting, you gain slow immunity, 20% movement speed, and 40 protections for 10 seconds. So this heroic teleport is you teleport in and you are ready to fuck. That's it. You you land and you're you're immediately, you know, blown all thing in or like blinking in or just ready to fight. That's what this is. And persistent teleport. The effect is not interrupted by damage and is interrupted. Interrupted by hard crowd control. Obviously, kills and assists on enemy gods reduce the cooldown. And it's a 90 second cooldown. Okay. Okay. So this is basically just like... If you want to teleport... Let's say you're a solo laner, right? You teleport to, to mid or left in order for a gold fury fight. And you, you end up wiping the team. This is That's 50 seconds off your 90 second cooldown. You know, you, you back after the fight... You go back to your lane and it's already back up, you know? It, so I could see this one. This is just very, like, I'm going to be everywhere on the map and you can't stop me. <laughs> like, I like this one a lot. Persistent teleport is really sick. Hero teleport is sick too. I, I think I'd honestly buy uh, heroic teleport more often. But persistent teleport is m like a higher skill cap, I think. It's really cool. <clears throat> All right. You now have glyph items. So what glyph items are is fucking crazy. There's a couple items in the game that can go to tier four now. In tier four, basically just allows it adds a new passive to those abilities or to to those um those items, and uh, that's about it. All glyph items cost an additional six hundred gold beyond their tier three cost. There's no level restriction or amount restriction on glyph items. Players can get as many as their class allows and get them as early or late as they choose. So there's no restriction around them. Glyphs are just tier 4 items that are a little bit stronger than your tier 3 variant of them. <coughs> Alright. So, Amulet of Silence, which is a glyph of Heartward Amulet, gains every 5... When you're hit by an ability... You gain a stack, and at five stacks, um, your next basic ability... Actually, I lied. It's not when you get hit by an ability. It's just if an enemy casts an ability within 40 units, you gain a stack. And at five stacks, your next basic attack will silence them for 1.5 seconds. This effect can occur every 45 seconds. I think this is kind of shit, to be honest. A 1.5 second silence every 45 seconds seems pretty garbage. You're only getting this off once, maybe twice, during a team fight, if the team fight's really long. And I doubt it's going to make that much of a difference, you know? But, uh, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? Um, the other glyph for Heartward Amulet, because each one has, each, each item, there's only a specific item, um, or specific items, but each item has two different glyphs. It's kind of like the options of the... Uh, the relics, but now they're for items. Um, the other option for a heart ward is 20% of your physical protections are now converted to magical protections. Okay. It's very niche, though. Like, if you could build a lot, you could stack physical protections early game, because that's normally who's going to carry the games early or, or the, the, the warriors and the junglers and stuff like that. You could stack physical protection early game and then late game when the mage starts hitting you for a thousand or twelve hundred, you buy amulet of stronghold and all of a sudden you are now super tanky to the mage instead of the physicals. So this is actually really nice. This is actually really nice. 
because it scales through the game. Most of the time, early game, you're getting shit on by physical gods. So you're going to stack fizz, fizz prots. And late game, you're getting shit on by the magical gods. And this just, I mean, this fixes both problems. You stack your physical D early, and then you get heart ward amulet with the amulet of stronghold glyph. And all of a sudden, you're tanky as fuck against the mage. Easy peasy. That's really good. That's really good. <laughs> Um, and then the, another item that you can get glyphs on is Breastplate of Valor. Obviously, you can use these items. Or if you read. I don't read. Whatever. The first glyph is each time you are hit by an ability, you gain a stack of five protections that correspond to the damage type you are hit. Up to a maximum of four stacks each. So basically a maximum of 20 protections of each type, physical and magical. Once you reach max stacks of both kind, you gain a burst of 20% movement speed and double your protections gained by this effect for 8 seconds. After which all stacks are removed. Okay. That's pretty good. <coughs> so basically in the middle of a team fight, this is going to get maxed out. That's just how it works. Most of the time it's going to get maxed out at least. Um, and when it is maxed out, you gain 40 physical protections, 40 magical protections, and 20% movement speed. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. What's the other one? When your ultimate ability is finished casting, you provide an aura and a 40 unit range, reducing basic attack damage from enemies by 30%. This is crazy. This is way better. This is so much better than 40 protections. 30% 30% basic attack reduction for 5 seconds. That is so fucking good. <laughs> That's more than shell. Shell is literally 25%. Yeah, shell is 25% basic attack reduction. And now you, now you have this, which just gives you 30% 30, 30 basic attack reduction. Talk about fucking up hunters, man. I'm all about it. I'm all about it. You guys know I ban five hunters every game. I'm all about it. All right. They have Deathbringer glyphs. Um, okay. Critical hit on enemy gods, afflict them with poison. This poison slows them by 10%, reduce their damage output. So it's Poison Star. Note, Poison Star has been removed from the game. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, no more Poison Star. Get fucked, loser. Now you're a glyph for Deathbringer. Understood. And this one, no, judging by the note, is just the Malice effect on Deathbringer. So Malice and Poison Star are out of the game. They are now also... Part of Deathbringer. Malice or Poison Star. You get to pick which one. Alright. I respect. I respect that. I respect that. Alright. Jotun's Ferocity, aka Tier 4 of Jotun's Wrath. Uh, your next basic attack marks an enemy god. If you hit the marked enemy god, uh, or the marked enemy hits you with the basic attack, or ability, you gain one stack. Each stack provides 2% increased damage towards the marked enemy, stacking up to 10 times. So when you're fighting, you can mar and you mark someone, you can get up to a 20% increased damage against them. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And it stacks up quick, because it's, it's not only when you hit them, it's when they hit you as well. It's when they hit you as well. So 20% increased damage um, towards that person you're fighting. In duel, this is going to be nice. This is going to be really nice. What is this one, though? Hold on. You drop below 40% health, gain 10% movements, 40% physical ability lifesteal for 5 seconds. So, so it's Pele passive with 10% movement speed. Basically, every character in the game has Pele passive. Okay. It's Pele and a stick. So do you want Pele and a stick? Or do you want 20% damage increase? These are both amazing. These are both very, very good. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which one I want. And lastly, for the glyphs, you have a Rod of Tahuti that can now go to tier 4 with the glyph. Successfully hitting an enemy god with an ability calls down a meteor that lands on them after 1.5 seconds, dealing 100%, or 100 damage plus 30% of your magical power. In a 15 unit radius. It's an AoE, obviously. And it's got the cooldown of an ultimate. Um, okay. That's not that good, right? 30% scaling. 
A 30% scaling of magical power with only 100 base damage? I don't think that's very good. I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. I mean, it does decent damage, but nothing. You're, it's not going to help you nuke, nuke someone that much faster. Nimble, Rod of Tahuti, for every 40 magical power you have. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, no. The Freyas, the Olerons, the Kronos, the Souls. Literally any mage. Any mage in the game is now attack speed capped. Oh, no. That scares me. This is scary. This is, this is, this is spooky. I'm, I'm buying it. I mean, uh, every game, every single, every game, no matter what, I'm buying it. I don't care. Anyways, whatever. Crit adjustments, they changed the uh, algorithm in the game in order to make crits more stable. So if you've been getting no crits, like, like let's say you have 20% chance, right? If you get no crits for a little bit, your crits will come up more often. And if you're critting too much, you'll start critting less and less in order to even out your crit chance over the course of the game. Um, so your critical hit sprees, obviously, and critical hit misses are both less likely to happen on the extreme end. So you're, you're probably not going to get six crits in a row, and you're not going to not get six crits in a row. You know what I mean? So it's, I mean, nothing really changed, honestly. Uh, actually, they did lower the damage of crits. It used to be twice as strong as your normal hit. Now it's one point, now it's 75% of your normal hit. So it, it, they nerfed it a little bit, but it's good. All right. Starter changes. <clears throat> Warrior's Axe. I'm just going to run through these because they're pretty, you know, general. I just muted. I pressed the wrong button and I coughed. Anyways. Um, slight nerf to Warrior's Axe. That's okay. Uh, big buff to Bluestone. Pretty good. Pretty good. The two upgrades of uh, Eye of the Jungle, I believe is what it's called. Both Pretty good. I mean, five powers, like, uh, you know, whatever the fuck. Doesn't matter much. This one's pretty good, though. Um, Tainted Steel. Got a 50 gold buff. And Tainted Steel is already a very good item, so I don't know why they would do that, but I guess it wasn't being picked up enough in Conquest. Okay, though. Now, on to the item changes. On to the item changes. Mystical Mail. Does five less damage. That doesn't matter at all. Uh... This is actually huge. It's a 25% reduction of your protections from items. So you used to get a shield based on 125% of your protections from items. It is now only 100%. You get a 25% smaller shield with Pridwin, which means it does 25% less damage as well. So it's a pretty big nerf to Pridwin. Pretty big nerf. Uh, Bulwark... 3% less shield. Not much of a difference. Telekines from 100 power down to 90. In my opinion, needed. And I love auto attack mages, but Telekines was too good. Everyone knew it. Um, Party, thank you for the sub. And Swampy Bear, thank you for the sub. I appreciate it. I muted the sound. Um, But yeah, I mean, Telekines, I think, needed it. This is where it throws me off a little bit. Voidstone got a 100 power buff and a 5% increased debuff of magical protection. So basically, it's 250 health and 15% pen for the same cost that it already had. It's a very good item now. If you're in a mage mirror match, or not necessarily mirror match, but mage versus mage in duel, I might recommend picking up Voidstone. Got 250 health and 15% pen. That's pretty good, dude. That's pretty damn good. You just go this with like one pen item and you're you're in the clear. Which by the way, Warlock Staff, I, I, I we haven't gotten into it yet, but Warlock Staff got buffed 
You can go Warlock Staff into Void Stone, be very tanky with a lot of HP, and have 25% pen. Just saying. Just saying. It's pretty good. Anyways. Uh, Emperor's Armor, attack speed, tower buff increased from 40% to 50% with an extra 50 HP. This does not affect when you walk into an enemy's tower. It does not slow their tower by 50 by 10% more. It only increases your your tower's attack speed. It does not slow theirs anymore. That's that's an important thing that I need to note. Okay. Mm, Jade Emp. I mean, you know, changed a little bit. Not too crazy. <clears throat> Hammers. Blackthorn got changed. 100 health off of it, 5 power off of it, but 25 of each protection. Less of a dual item now, more of a conquest item. Whereas, Runeforge got changed. Actually, 5 more power and 50 more health, I believe. It might be 250 right now, but I think it's 200. Um, and it, now it gives you 25 HP 5 and 20 MP 5. So a much more aggressive, a much more aggressive hammer. It does cost 2400 keep in mind, but it is a much more aggressive hammer. It kind of replaced, like, they kind of swapped roles, I guess. So, Alright, here we go. Keep it going. Keep it rolling. Um, Height of the Nemean, instead of 80 protections, it's now 90. So it's now the single-handed highest defensive item in the game, period, with 90 physical protection on one item. As well as you can a block stack every 10 seconds instead of 15, so... You might see more Hide of the Nemeans. I doubt it, but it could work. It could work. <clears throat> and Berserker Shield. This is dumb. This is this is just straight up dumb to me. Um, Berserker Shield was already a very good item. There was no need to add ten physical protection to it. But 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 they did, and now it has forty five physical protection instead of thirty five. So that Bologna that was shitting on you earlier, gonna shit on you a little bit harder. That Erling Shen that somehow survived your, your full burst, even though you're on her and you hit all eight spears with your ult, he's going to survive a little bit more now. That, that Osiris, eh, he's, he's just going to do what Osiris does. Just a little bit more. So I don't know why they did this, but they did it. Eh, stupid. Dumb. This, this is dumb. Anyways, Staff of Murden, 10 power more, two second longer passive, still bad. I don't think there's any scenario where you need Staff of Murden. Maybe with Agni, Agni would be okay with it, but the, the previous passive for Staff of Murden I still think shouldn't have been changed. Uh, Celestial Legion Helm. This one's weird to me. This one, they increased the magical power from 70 to 90, so it's very much more focused on damage, and they re reduced the uh, physical prots from 40 to 30. So, again, more based on damage. Um, I don't understand it because uh if i just tap in the game real quick celestial legion helm's passive is getting tankiness um let me just find it real quick for you its passive is getting physical protection up to five stacks of so 35 basically you gain 35 physical protection it now has 90 power and 65 physical protection that's a very strong item that is a very strong item so if you see any mage, if you're a mage in duel, you actually might want to pick this up. <coughs> you actually might want to pick this up. Warlock Staff, 10 more power. I already said this earlier. I think this is good. Uh, Karen's Coin, 10 more power. I think this is good. Sidney Shard, 10 more power. And 100 gold cut off. I think it's good. I just think general, more power across the board in all mage items. Um, Every mage item got 10 more power or 20 more power, so... It is going to be hitting on just a little bit harder. And now that they have more power, guess what? Guess what that means? That means that, uh... Uh, hold on. This, even better. Even faster attack speed. Because everything has a little bit more power on it. <clears throat> Anyways, onto the magical, or the, the, the other crit items. Rage got a 5 power increase. Honestly, nothing really mattered from it. Decreased cost from 2800 to 2650 for Failnot. I think Failnot was in a good spot already. I could be wrong, but it was used in a lot of builds. 
for hunters. Um, so buffing it, I don't understand. But maybe they're buffing it because they want more hunters to get it because of the fact that they took out Malice and they took out Poison Star. So they want more crit chance to be accessible for hunters. That might be the reasoning behind it. Who knows? Um, Deathbringer, it got buffed 5 power, got buffed 5% crit, and got buffed by 100 gold, 3k down to 2900. Um, so I think this, this, all these crit items are just to make crit a little bit more accessible. Uh, because, or, or just a little bit better to use, just because they removed some of the crit items, is my guess. Um, Shadow Steel Shuriken, 5% increase in attack speed. Healing reduction buff from 6 seconds to 10. That's wild. A 10 second debuff has never been seen in the game before. Now you see it. Uh, I don't know why it would need to be 10 seconds long. It doesn't make any sense to me, but... There you have it. 10 seconds long. Uh, Malice, Point Star, both re removed from the game. Atalanta's Bow. 40 physical power, 25% attack speed, 20% crit chance. Okay. 10% life steal, passive is unchanged. 10% life steal, 25% crit chance, 20% or 25% attack speed, 20%. Like this is this is this is a this is a great item. It's a fucking great item. I there's nothing I can say other than this is a fantastic item. I would buy it. Every game, every match of duel, I'll buy this item. That's ridiculous. That's going to be changed. Mark my words. Atalanta's bow is going to be changed before the season launches. Like before the real season. That's insane. That's incredible. I don't know what to tell you. Um, Silver Branch, 20% pen instead of 10 and 200 gold more. I actually like that. I actually like that. Get this item on every god in the game. Yeah. That's wild. That's wild. Um, Devil Gloves, stack it 20 stacks faster. You stack it 20 stacks faster and actually get five more power at the end of it. Okay, cool. I think that's, I think that's warranted. Devils has not been bought recently. Hey, they reverted Toxic Blade. Toxic Blade used to have three stacks and be 60% anti-heal. And they lowered it to 40. They increased it back to 60% anti-heal. I still think it's OP. Toxic Blade was already purchased in everybody's build all the time, no matter what. So now that it's 60% anti heal, maybe we bought just a little bit more. Still OP. Um, Hydra's is 10% pen now. A little bit more costly. Um, Golden Blade, more power, more attack speed. And both very good for the for the super early game, which is the only reason you buy Golden Blade, so I respect that. Thank you. Um, Soul Eater, five power more. That's okay. That's okay. Evolve Soul Eater, five power more, obviously because this is five that goes up by five. And 5% 5 more lifesteal. Okay. I, I mean, the people that use Soul Eater are still going to use it. The people that didn't are still not going to use it, so I don't know why... I mean, I guess, I guess it, it's nice. I guess it's nice. The people that use it are a little bit better at, at using it now, so that's good. Um, this makes no fucking sense. Why would you add 5% movement speed to Blood Forge and decrease the, the cost? That's there. I mean, there's literally no reason. I, get, I, I understand the thought process. The thought process is you buy Blood Forge in order to stay in the fight after you get a kill. And it's hard to stay in the fight. Because you're slow after getting a kill. So they gave you some movement speed to stay in the fight a little bit longer. Okay, I get it. That's fine. Atlas. They buffed everything about him. <clears throat> right? Increased his movement speed. Increased his HP. Increased his HP per level. Perfect. Um, decreased the size of the passive meter. That doesn't matter. Increased base damage of his one... By 20 across the board. Increases slow by 5% across the board. Both very good thing. Gravity pull. Atlas is now knockback immune while firing this ability. 
Thank God. I said I said that during my first look. I said that during my first look, he should be knocked back immune when using that ability. Now he is. Um, and kinetic charge. Let's see what does this do. Now damages minions it passes through. Blessed. Ability now has a base soul of twenty five percent. Applied to enemies got hit, even if no souls were ten. Blessed. Uh, decrease the stacks of slows from three to two, so the max slow is still seventy five percent, but easier to obtain. Okay, all of these are amazing. All of these are amazing changes for Atlas. I may play him again. Uh, the fact that his base damage is increased by 20 on his one is super good for clear. Super good for clear. Um, and the fact that now his three actually does damage to minions. So now if you have to use two abilities to clear the wave, you, you at least have the option. Okay, so we'll, we'll, do another, we'll do another Atlas video once this change happens. Um, Kamazots, Devour. I think it devours his three. I think it's his three. It has a lower heal on the on the late end, and the same heal on the early end. So keep it level one. Keep doing what you were doing with it, with him, and just be prepared for a smaller heal later. And his alt cooldown increased by ten ten seconds. Sorry, I was gonna say ten percent, but by 10 seconds. Um, increased base damage from 100 to 100. 145 to 140. Oh no, they decreased it. They decreased it, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, B-Mix, thank you so much for the 15 gifted subs. Holy shit, my guy. Thank you so much. That's super kind of you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's amazing. God damn. Thank you. Um. Anyways, that's that's amazing, Beamix. Thank you so much. So his alt does a little bit less damage. It's good. I think his alt was a little bit too OP, anyways. Um, soul passive heat generation reduced. I don't think you had to do it, but it's okay that you did it. Um. Three increased cooldown by one second and decreased movement speed you gain during the three. Both of those I think are good actually, because I think the three was a little bit overpowered. Um, I just, uh, you know, I just think her three was a little overpowered. Her one I don't think needed to be changed, but so be it. I don't own the game, you know? Uh, Bastet decreased physical power of the two from 25% to 20%, aka a 20% damage nerf on the two. That's a lot. That's a big nerf. That's a big nerf. 20% damage on the two is a big nerf. Um, let me see. Additional audio cues on the pre-fire of this ability for clarity, which is her alt. And increase the cooldown. So Bastet got nerfed all around, huh? I didn't think Bastet's two was that OP. I thought it's more her, more her, uh, her alt being OP, but yeah, maybe I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um, Odin. Increased cooldown for his three and his two. I'm sorry, his his one and his two. Um, so you're going to be one second later on those bird bombs during team fights. Just you know, account for it. No big deal. Nike, her alt now has a slightly less big shield. Actually, I don't think it matters because Sunder is so in meta. But now that Sunder is changing, maybe it does matter. So they they just pre pre meditarily changed changed the size of her alt, which I understandable honestly. Geb decreased shield health scaling from twenty per Geb's level to fifteen per Geb's level, so the maximum shield is five fifty instead of six fifty, and decreased shield duration from five seconds to four seconds. So it's a second off everywhere. I actually like this a lot. Because Geb was, his shield really was, uh, I'm going to save you no matter how much they're going to dive you, right? And his shield being lasting less time and being 100 damage lower is actually still, it's still, you know, like, if you're getting jumped on by one person, it's still going to save you. But it won't save you from an entire fucking team jumping on you. So I think it's a good change, actually. Um, Arachne decreased cooldown of her webs by 
two seconds. That's good. She needs she needs the help chasing people as much as you can. Lower that down to one second if you want. I don't even give a shit. But she Arachne needs the help chasing people, so it's a good call. Um, Amaterasu increased uncharged damage and fully charged damage. There's no need. There's no need for this. There's no need to increase Ama's damage. There's like there's just straight up no need. But you know, Ama's already one of the best gods in duel, and this is just gonna. I mean, you're gonna have to start banning Ama just straight up. You're gonna have to start banning her. Um, Yorm increased base movement speed. That's good. He felt slow. But I, I thought he only felt slow because he was so big, but maybe I'm wrong. But I like more movement speed, obviously. Um, <clears throat> decreased self-slow from 20% to 15%. Decreased damage taken debuff from 10% to 5%. I think this is his three? Is that his three? Immovable? Am I right about that, chat? Oh, it's his passive. It's his passive. Okay, cool. So he's just a little bit faster and gets hit a little bit harder. Okay, understood. And his one, which is Venomous Haze, increased the slow. So when it hits somebody, they actually feel slowed. And increased tick damage by five across the board. That's respectable. The tick damage isn't like... It's never one to be like, secure you a kill, really. It's, it's the initial hit that's going to do everything for you, but an extra tick or two for... Uh, or an extra tick damage or two for... Minion clear is not looked down on. Here's alt. Does a lot more damage, actually. Holy shit. I guess, I guess they're buffing tears alt a lot. Um, just because of the fact that it was used mainly for movement before. Like, you would alt over somebody just so you could get the one and bring them back to your team. And now you can actually, like, now if you hit your alt, it actually hurts, you know? Good. Um, Baba Yaga. Baba's Brew. Got a 10 damage base increase. Home Sweet Home. Removed Self Root on Fire. What? What is Self Root on Oh! Whenever you would use her alt, it would root you in place for a second. Which would suck dick because then they could just stand next to you and kill your ass while you couldn't do anything about it because you couldn't even hit your own feet. Dumbass alt design. Anyways, they removed it, so that's good. And um, reduced pre-fire time from 0.5 to 0.2. That's good. Very, very good alt changes. I think. Super good alt changes. Uh, Kernanos. Summer stance physical scaling from 5 to 7.5. Good. I think it needed it, honestly. And Bramble Blast direct hit now apply a root and a cripple instead of just a root. That sucks dick. That's horrible. Now you can't even jump if you get hit by a by a Bramble Blast. You just gotta sit there with your dick in your hand and take it until you die. That sucks. That's that's a that's a rough buff. Anyone who plays Kernanos, shouting out in glee. Anyone who doesn't like me, I'm you know, I'm replacing him in my ban list and He's now, uh, he's now one of my perma bands. Cause fuck this. Uh, Trinobog increased base damage from Heart of Cold. I guess that's his one. No, that's his passive. Increased base damage on detonate from fifteen to twenty percent of Trinobog's. Oh, okay. Extra five percent little explosion on every third auto is not bad. Speed up the travel time on the initial hit and increase range from fifty-five to sixty. Okay. All right, so the one hit, the one's a little faster. The one's a little faster, and you do a little bit more damage on the on every third auto. That's good. Good Cherno buffs. Let's see, Horus. Updraft. I think that's his one. I think that's his one. Um, scaling by fifteen percent increase. That's really big. That's a that's a, that's nice. Increase gust damage by ten across the board. And the seconds, I don't know what this is. Is this the cooldown? Is this the cooldown? 
goes from 14 to 12 instead of 15 to 13. <coughs> so second across the board on cooldown. A little more damage and 15% more power. And his one's going to chunk now. His one is going to chunk now. Oh, and his two. His two got a, got a buff over late game. Up to 30 extra damage. Nice. Uh, Chrono's passive. Decreased time per stack from 2 minutes to 1.5. Buffed to 125 at 37.5 minutes. Previously, you had to be in a game to get Kronos' passive, which is power, by the way. A lot of people don't know this. You actually gain more power the longer the game goes. Um, but it used to take an hour. You used to have to be in a game for an hour to get your maxed out buff. Now you only have to be in a game for a little over half an hour. To get the maxed out buff. That's good. That means you'll have more power in general over the course of a game. So Chronos buff, actually. Um <clears throat> Nox Shadow Lock, that's her one. Does 20 more damage to minions, that is, 20 more damage to minions. And description was updated to clear level. It's minion damage. Understandable. But more minion damage, which is good, helps you with clear. And last but not least. <clears throat> is set. Increased radius of ally buff from 40 units to 55. That's her passive, which I think gives her HP 5 or gives everyone HP 5 if somebody dies in her area. So I think now I think now it's just it's a little bigger. Um, wind gust, decreased mana cost, so now you don't go oom with one ability. Which is very good. Actually, a big, a big decrease in mana cost. That's really important. That's really good, actually. That's really good. Um, Spirit Ball increased base damage from 70 to... 70 from 230 to 70 to 250. So 20 base damage late game. I don't think it matters much. Your, your 2 is almost all scaling, so... But, you know, more damage from a set is not bad. And uh, more mana sustain from a set is even better. And those are all the changes for Season 9 on the release patch of Season 9. Overall, I'd say all really good changes. Honestly, all really good changes. I'm scrolling through just looking at them real quick. I think the nerf to Bastards 2 was a little bit much, but it might get changed again. Um, everything else was pretty good. Like, Ama didn't need the buff, but she got it, so it is what it is. Uh, Kernanos Bramble Blast, now applying cripples, scares the shit out of me. But overall, very, very cool. Very, very cool. Atlas, much needed buff on pretty much everything. The item changes are nearly irrelevant. There's a couple in here that are really good, like 10% pan on Hydras, 5% um, movement speed on Blood Forge. Doesn't make sense, but it's very good. Uh, the Golden Blade getting that 5 power, 5% 5 attack speed increase is really good for the early game. Uh, Toxic Blade being 60% anti yield instead of 40 is super, super good. And then all the crit changes, all the just general power increases for mages. It's all good stuff, man. All good stuff. Anyways, with the glyphs, the changes in glyphs, and the uh, the changes in relics, having a tier 3 and, and items having a tier 4, it's going to be a hell of a lot to learn going into Season 9. So, um... Got a lot to do. Got a lot to learn.